Good afternoon. Okay. I like to open in prayer real quick. So dear heavenly father, I come to you today, father God. And I just thank you for the word that you placed on my heart, dear Lord Jesus. I pray for everyone in this room, dear Lord Jesus, that um, I'm just able to uh, minister to them through the Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, I ask that you give me the words to speak. Dear Lord, give me the knowledge and understanding to um, just spread the message that you want me to spread. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to pray for deliverance for everybody in here, Father God, that I see chains break and uh, the um, strongholds cast down in the name of the Lord, Father God. I just want to see freedom through the blood of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Okay. So first off, I'm going to start and just talk a little bit about uh, faith and um, what a blessing it is to have faith in Jesus. And uh, faith in Jesus is what sets us free. He's, uh, the faith in the Lord is what delivers us. He is the one who breaks the chains. He is the one who cast out the demon is, a, is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's through the Holy Spirit we are set free. It's through the Holy Spirit that we are redeemed, saved, and um and called forth out of darkness. So praise God to faith. So in the first scripture, I'm going to start off will be in um, in um, Hebrews 11, 6. And it says, the word of God says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that seek him diligently. Praise God for that. Because he is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. And he will set you free if you seek him diligently. Because today, the topic I'm going to be coming against and the demon I'm going to be coming against is a spirit of unbelief. See, it's faith in Jesus that sets us free and delivers us. And just like you have um, the true, you have the, the counterfeit, and that's the devil. Well, we're set free, we're set free through faith. We are held in bondage through the spirit of unbelief. Unbelief is a spirit that wants to see us in hell, and that's where it wants us to go. It resides in our heart, and it becomes a hardening of the heart, and it has a lot of demons attached to it that open doors with it. So I'm going to be going to, um, let me see what scripture I'm starting off first. The first scripture I'm going to be going to is out of Hebrews 3, 7 through 18. And the word says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in, re in the rebellion in the day of the trial of the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me. And they saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. And right there, this is a scripture about the 10 spies that, that went about and about the people of Moses and uh, the spies that went out right there with the, the Moses in their report. And see, these spies had a spirit of unbelief. And the people there that were with Moses had that spirit of unbelief, the 10 spies. See, these 10 spies were people that had experienced God's goodness. They had seen the work of the Lord. They had been seen the Red Sea parted. They had seen the cloud by day, the fire by night. They had been fed heavenly food, heavenly manna. They had walked with the presence of God and seen his power and his works. See, a lot of times we'll be like that. We will see the work of God in our lives. He will set us free. He will restore things. He will mend relationships. We will feel his presence. We will see his fingerprints on our lives. And we will still harbor unbelief in our heart. We will still ask God, why is, you know, are you really setting me free? Are you really delivering me? See, and that's the problem that we'll have is this spirit likes to get in our heart. And, and, and through this spirit, his spirit, if it's strong man of unbelief, will open the door for fear, anxiety, stress, worry. You'll start to second guess God's word. Second guess your relationship with God. Second guess God's timing in the circumstance. Like I said, this is a counterfeit spirit of faith. So we should walk in faith with Jesus. 
that's where we find our strength and he is our strong tower and our faith in the Lord is what we have to have to stand through trials and tribulations because not every day is a good day right we're we're put through the fire as gold to be refined sometimes and that's there's a saying that that I like that says you'll know what is a, in a person when they get shook what comes out of them so when you get shook what comes out of you are you what is your mission statement are you producing faith are you producing unbelief because through this um, spirit of unbelief, there's, like I said, there's a lot of more spirits that operate in this spirit. And, you know, like I said, fear and unbelief work hand in hand. As soon as you start operating in unbelief, you start to operate in fear. And then once you operate in fear, you know, you open the door for so many demonic uh, attacks. It's, um, it's uh, just, it's not a good thing. And I've got right here, see, you know, because the spies... When they went out, they saw what God had offered them. Their first sight was a, a land full of milk and honey. It was, it was the promise that God had spoken to the, the people of Israel and the people of Moses. He had promised that they have this land, that they could take this land. But as they went on in their journey, they, they entered the land and they saw who possessed the land. And many times we will do this. We, we will... As, especially in a deliverance, we'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll come, we'll get deliverance, we're on fire for God, and then we start to listen to the lies of the enemy. We start to look at things in our life as, oh my gosh, the, the devil's bigger than, than the hand of the God, right? So we'll walk in freedom for a second, but as soon as we really start walking out our deliverance, we'll get back into the spirit. We'll start to put back on the old man. We'll start to wear that spirit. We'll start to be the things that we just got delivered from, we'll, we'll, we will verbally, mentally take back on. We will confess things that we shouldn't confess. It's, it's a mission statement at times. Sometimes, what is your tongue saying? Because your tongue can get you into sin. Just like your tongue can get you into sin, the actual unbelief is sin. It says in the word of God that unbelief is sin. So to be operating in this spirit, you're operating in sin. To be second guessing your deliverance sometimes you're operating in sin and that's what happens when you when you get delivered and, and then you think but this didn't get rid of it's the hand of god that delivers it's the power of god that delivers so no demon can outstand the power of god if you have pure faith in your deliverance and don't get me wrong i i, I got this revelation one time and it got confirmed now deliverance is like to me it's like changing oil in the car you go about your daily life, you see things, you hear things, things creep in. So deliverance is, ne is a necessity. We, we all the time need deliverance, you know. You know, as we go along, even if you're doing deliverance, as you go along, you might open a door somewhere you didn't know in ignorance. You might see something, you might hear something. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about deliberate unbelief, where you just go through deliverance, and it's not 30 minutes later, you're listening to the lie of the enemy and taking the bait because it's bait spirits like to get you hooked they like to hook you just like leviathan they like to hook you the spirit of unbelief wants to hook you and pull you back in to what you just got delivered from and that's having unbelief in your deliverance having unbelief in your own self having unbelief in the holy spirit giving you self-control to stay away from sin and that's where we have to come against this spirit and start to stand on the word of god and say no i i take authority i'm going to walk in faith because as we see the 10 spies, that their mission state, this is their mission statement. When they came back to Moses, the spies, full of fear and unbelief, said, said to the Israelites, it would be foolish for us to try and go against the army which had inhabited the land because they are, they're, they're many and they're strong. So this is the spies' mission statement that are un unbelief. And remember, there's 10 of these spies. There's 12 that go out. 10 of the spies have a mission statement of fear and unbelief. And that's why it says narrow is the way to the Lord, because the two spies that stand on the faith of what God had spoken, their mission statement is this. We'd be foolish to not go and take what God had already promised to give us. And that's where we have to be a set apart people. If, if we really have to seek God to know God's word, because this unbelief spirit is an, can operate and will operate in every one of us. It is Satan's counterfeit spirit. I believe, that tries to get into our heart, to harden our heart. And once we have a hard heart, 
it cuts our communication with the Lord. We have to have a heart of flesh to communicate with the Lord. Through Jesus is the one that gives us a heart of flesh. It's, it's the hurt, the pains, it's the, the mishaps in life. It starts to harden our hearts. It's the shame, the rejection, the guilt. And all of this comes from the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the one that hardens our heart. It's these spirits when we, when we, when we have a lack of faith and think, man, you know, I, I just can't get over the hump. It's not you that's getting over the hump. God's the one pushing you over the hump. God is the one that's setting you free. God is the one breaking the chains. There's nothing we can do. Now, are we to live holy and righteous? Amen, definitely. We're be, to be people that seek God's face, to go after God with all that we have. I like to, I, I, I minister a lot to people at work. And I come from a background of addiction, imprisonments, and, and darkness. So in my work area, it's, it's very good because I'm around people that are in addiction, and, and they, they're harder people. And I'm able to tell them, you know, I used to always tell them, you know, because, you know, people think, well, I've just done too much. And trust me, I've done a whole bunch more than these people, but I don't anymore. I, I try my best to live holy. But I always say, you know, the thief on the cross, he wasn't baptized. He did no good works, but he went to heaven with Jesus, you know. Because he believed in his heart and he confessed with his mouth. But we cannot leave that there. Because what would, have, oh, now this is what the Holy Spirit has given me. Letting you, now, what do you think that thief would have done if he would have got off that cross? I don't think he would have been back to unbelief and sin. I think that he would have been sold out on faith for Jesus, doing the works of God, and been a forerunner for God and doing exactly what God wanted him to do. I do not think that thief would have got back off that thing. And that's how we got to be, see that when, when, when we're entangled and demonic and we're enslaved because I've been enslaved by demons. And I know how it is to be like that. It's suicide thoughts, anxiety thoughts, um, shame, guilt. I mean, there's no good thing. And in any good thing, anytime you're feeling good, it's because you're doing substances or you're doing sin that's counterfeit good. And it's all fake and it's all nasty. And when it wears off, it brings all those demons back with the guilt, the shame. It's because you, you, you bit the hook you know but the the thing about that is that's what happens to us is we'll go put ourselves back on that cross right when we start operating in unbelief we don't walk in the freedom of god god is here to set us free god's word said who the son sets free is free indeed and that's and and that's what we have to believe and you know sometimes unbelief will operate and then i i don't have any strongholds i don't have any uh any uh demon activity or oppression or uh, in my life which at all of us face this. It's a spiritual warfare day for day. And that's an unbelief in, in, in a person in the spirit realm. And, and you can't do that. The word of God, especially through the New Testament, talks about spiritual warfare. I mean, the whole Bible's full of it, right? So right there, that's an ignorant of the word if, if you do not believe in this, these spirits that are attacking this, this unbelief to think that, that, you know, I'm just going to live, you know, good and, and be fine. That, that's not the case. The holiest man gets attacked by God. The minute his eyes wake up and that's when we have to put on the faith. We have to put on faith and, and walk in faith in that. See, a lack of faith is what destroyed the people from entering God's promised land. That spirit of unbelief stopped. I mean, don't get me wrong. Caleb and Joshua, the ones that had the mission statement and the ones that had faith, they're the only two that entered the promised land. The rest of them perished walking in the wilderness walking a 10 mile journey where they should be to the promised land. They, they just didn't get to what God had already said they owned and could have. And that was a, a lack of faith issue. And that was a spirit that the enemy had sent to stop them from getting there. Okay. So now I want to go on to how this, um, this spirit only doesn't just operate in the, it also operates not just in fear, but it also operates in double-mindedness. Let me find my place. Because um, this spirit right here is, uh, will, 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 the, the unbelief spirit will hinder your deliverance. It will stop you from receiving what God has to give. Just like it stopped the Israelites and Moses' people from entering the promised land, it will hinder you in your, in your deliverance. I'm going to go at a, a first James and it's going to be two through eight. It says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So 
James is showing us that we're going through a trial. He's going through a hard time. Right here, he says, count it all joy when you're in the season of struggles and trials and temptation because it, the producing is producing patience. So we patiently wait on the Lord. But that patience has its perfect work that you might be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If, anyone, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given unto him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And right there shows you that the spirit of unbelief produces a double-minded man, which will receive nothing from the Lord. So when you come up and, you, and you're seeking God's face and you know you get deliverance and you start to hear the enemy try to creep back in, know the severity of the issue. If you start to open the door of unbelief and doubt and, and, and start to question God's word, you're not going to receive it. It says right there, let him, he will receive nothing. We have to, and don't get me wrong. You know, we all struggle a little bit with that. But just know what I'm trying to, to come at today is to show you that, that how serious this unbelief spirit is. And when you know that God's touching you with his hand and you know that you're getting delivered, make sure after that deliverance that you push that spirit off. Because most of the time, that's what the enemy is going to come with. He wants to steal what God has released you from. He wants to rearrest you. He wants to get legal ground back in you. He wants to take what God has given you. And once, like I said, who the sun sets free is free indeed. He is free. He is not to go back in bondage. He is not to go back in chains. He is not to come back in agreement with, I think, I think I'm getting the demon back. I mean, it's, do you got more belief in God? Or you, do you have more belief in the demon coming back? Where is your faith? What are you having faith in? So going on from there, I want to go to, um, I'm going to go to a story in Mark. And I thought this was real interesting the first time I read it. And this is about Jesus and about a people of unbelief he's dealing with. So I'm going to start at Mark 6, and I'm going to read 1 through 8. It says, uh, when he came out from there, and he came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things and from what such mighty works are he performed by his hands is this not the carpenter the son of mary the brother of james and not his sisters here with us so they were offended at him and jesus said to them a prophet is not worth honor except in his own country um, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country among his own relatives in his own house now he could not do now he could not do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few people and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching Jesus could have cast demons out of everybody in there he's the son of god the unbelief in these people's heart hindered their hindered their deliverance it hindered their healing it hindered their freedom they didn't they didn't believe he was who he says he was. They, it was a spirit with these people of unbelief. And what I found interesting here is he was at a place where it says he didn't cast out any demons. So we see he's actually at a place now where he, he just doesn't do anything because it's a spirit of unbelief. But right here, God's word will always confirm himself. So in the next scripture down after he leaves these people of unbelief, what does he do? He does this. And he called the 12 to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. He was just at a place where no spirits were cast out, right? Because of unbelief. And what he did, he moved on from that place. He moved on to where his work could be done. He moved on because he's going to be delivered. He's going to be the deliverer, the physician, the healer. And he gave authority to his disciples to cast out unclean spirits. It's not that he couldn't cast him out. It's the heart posture on the people with the hardened, hardened heart wouldn't receive the message of him. 
And then going on from there, it says, he commanded him to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts. Um, I was blessed to uh, give an insight. They walked in faith right there. They went out with nothing. They didn't have a spirit of unbelief. They had a spirit of faith to, to do what he said he, they could do. They took nothing with them because they knew that he was the Jehovah Jireh. He was the provider. He was the one that was going to provide for them on their journey. It says, but to wear sandals and not put on tunics. He also said to them, whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than that city. Once again, the spirit of unbelief wants us in hell. He says right here that these people that have unbelief and are in him, it's better for the in judgment day for Sodom and Gomorrah than these people, that they are going to face a strict judgment. And that's how dangerous the spirit of unbelief is. And the spirit of unbelief will try to get a person into bitterness. It will use deaths. It will use divorces. It will use hardships in life. But as we go back to James, we count all this joy that that produces a perfect patience in us. Does that what shows us to, to be more like Jesus? Jesus faced trials and tribulations. Jesus faced hardship. Jesus' own people spit in his face and crucified him and killed him. And he counted it all joy. He prayed for the people that were killing him. It's, it's, it's such a good thing and forgiveness that you see as when Jesus is praying for the people when, when they're killing him. As we see the first martyr in Stephan and when he's getting stoned and axed. And he sees Jesus standing. It's the only time you see in scripture that he is standing at the right hand of God, receiving him. Jesus is receiving Stephen because Stephen was praying for the people that were killing him. That's what gets Jesus off of his seat is faith in him and, and forgiveness of the people that, 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 that are full of that unbelief. We need to pray for these people that have that in their hearts. Pray they get deliverance. Pray they find salvation. Pray for the person that, that is in... Um, indoctrinated pray for the person that that is in, in with other religions especially nowadays as, as we're to be servants of god and, and disciples and go out and you know we do pray for the latter rain that we're anointed to preach to people because you can see the christianity dwindling down to just a small few of us and and and, and god is hated nowadays and, and i mean he's i mean he's been pulled out of school since i was in school but i mean he's hated now and he's just to be a christian is to be a, a full of hate I mean, it's so deceptive that they call evil good and good evil. And in these days, the spirit of unbelief is running rampant. I mean, the spirit of unbelief isn't just not believing in Jesus. It's believing in other things. You can believe in Darwinism, Buddhism, Hinduism. All that is not believing in Jesus. They have believers in new age practices. These are unbelief spirits. An unbelief spirit takes you out of the true word of God. You see an unbelief spirit in the church nowadays where they take this word and add super grace on it. They add and subtract to the word. And it is an unbelief of God will send you to hell. That unbelief spirit will send you to hell. You can be deceived by the spirit. You can be led astray by the spirit. This spirit will teach you that sin's okay, that, that you just covered with the blood, that you, know, you don't have to confess and repent. It's all over YouTube. I'm sure if Christians, you watch it, what's going on? This is a wicked spirit. It multiplied with other spirits. I mean, it's, it, they, they, it's Satan. They all run in a pack. There's legions of them. This is just a name for them. But I was just showing that how this spirit of unbelief, how serious it is, because I'm going to go over to Revelation real quick and, and show you where the judgment is on the unbelief. And uh, I'm going to be reading Revelations 21, and uh, I'll be reading 5 through 8. And Revelations 21, 5 through 8, it says, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give foundation, I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. 
and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the unbeliever, the, the abnormal, ab, ab, abominal, the murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall inherit their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the, the unbeliever ranks right up there at the top of the list. He's up there with the cowardly. This is a perfect book. He makes number two on the spot of who's going to burn. See, he, become, he is put before the sexual immoral, the sorcerer, the idolater, is the unbelief, the unbeliever. And that right there is why we need to try to win souls for people. Because when you look at somebody that is walking and, 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 and they're worldly, and if you really look at them like Jesus look at them, they're going to hell. They're going to burn. And we should have compassion on their souls. And that's where our faith has to come in. That's where we have to walk in a spirit of faith to reach those people, to speak to those people. We need to let our legs line match up to our lips. You know, a lot of the times our lips are good, but our legs are walking somewhere. Because the first one that, that, that is on the list is the coward. What are you going to do when God and the Holy Spirit tells you to, to reach out and speak to somebody? Are you going to coward? Because if you, if you walk off in coward, you obviously have a little bit of unbelief. Because God, we're held accountable for what we know. We're held accountable for the souls that are in front of us. We're held accountable for the people that we minister to. And do we, I mean, we can, you know, we, we, uh, we minister and if they don't receive, we knock off our sandals and walk off. But if we never say anything, when we go to see God on our judgment day, what's he going to say? Is he going to, you know, I mean, I mean, I know he's got mercy and grace and we're all, you know, we're all work in progress. But for me personally, as the older I get, because don't get me wrong, I mean, I can't sit up here. Many times in life, I have just walked away and been the coward. Many times I have got delivered and walked off and picked those demons right back up and put them right back on my back. Many times. I'm a, I'm a trial and error person. I fail multiple times till I pick it up and learn. You know, that's the good thing about it. God's grace and God's mercy and his, his salvation. And, um, and um, you know, as, as I grow and, and learn, he, uh, he teaches and ministers to me to, uh, to, you know, he showed me this message and, you know, when he showed it to me, I'm operating and coward. And I've, I've done all these, you know, all these, but as I get older, I've grown more wisdom and I have a more heart posture of Jesus. And he changes my heart of stone every day. He chisels off a little bit and he gives me a heart of flesh, you know, because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And we don't love our lives unto death. And that's what he says right here is he, he, he's welcoming, welcoming in the overcomer. And we all in here are overcomers through the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Every one of us in here are overcomers, but we have to not be cowards. We have to not operate in unbelief. We have to stay away from sexual sin, idolatry, all that. We, you know, one of the, this year, one of the, the Holy Spirit had been ministering to me, you know, just a little testimony when I'm working, I can have a headphone in. I listen to a lot of sermons and I've been doing that for a couple of years now. And this year, I was like, I'm just listening to the Bible, just hands down, put it on the Bible and listen and let and let God minister to me. So I'm not led to the left or led to the right. And then nothing against anybody. That's just what season I'm in, you know, it's to just get it in, get it etched in my heart and on my mind and, and, and uh, just try to be the best servant I can be. And just more testimony. It's, it's, it's really awesome. Like at my job, the people that are drawn to me the most most and like have become good friends, they're atheists. They're not drawn to me. They're drawn to the Holy Spirit. And I ministered to these people. And I've been doing it for a few years now. And I see fruit. And, and some of these, the atheists, they're hard to minister to. You know, one of the best things I, I like about an atheist when I, they say, oh, I'm an atheist. And I say, well, you know, I don't really believe that anybody's an atheist because you hate God. You see, you, you can't not believe in something that you hate God, right? So how do, how do you hate something you don't believe in? It just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, it doesn't. So deep down, you're wounded somewhere. You got hurt. All of us can go through things, but you know, you got to really handle those people with care. But the cool thing is, is, is some of them are the best people I've met and, and, and I, and they're drawn to me and I'm able to preach and I see God working on them, you know? So anyways, um, that was just a look, what I've got today on the unbelief. And, uh, and, um, I hope that it was, was good. And I'm going to call it my beautiful wife. Now she's got a pretty good teaching. So um, I bless you in Jesus' name, and, and thank you all for uh, letting me share. Hello. How are you all doing? 
That was an awesome message on the spirit of unbelief, wasn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I'm a little shorter than everybody that comes up here, I think. Okay, so I'm going to make sure. Okay, is that good? Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, honey. That was a blessing. Um, we are Charles and Jesse Jernigan with Illuminating Light Ministries. Um, we also have our sister, Laquita, who's also a part of that. And um, our wonderful spiritual parents, Randy and Callie Ritchie, who we love dearly. We love Lake Hamilton Bible Camp and everybody here. Hi to Merrill. We are thankful for this place. We are thankful for deliverance. We were brought from darkness into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were drug addicts. We were we were on the street. We lived street lives in the prisons and rehabs. And, and God saved our souls and he delivered us. And he restored our marriage. He restored our children. And we will preach about him all the days of our life. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He set us free. There is no high like the most high. Hallelujah. And so we are here to proclaim and declare the goodness and the graciousness of our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. So he's no respecter of persons. What he did for me and my husband, he'll do for you. He'll do for your family members, for children, for anybody in your life, your cousins, anybody on drugs. You pray for them. You speak life. You bless and you have faith and you break the power of unbelief in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a teaching on the Jezebel spirit, okay? I can't stand this spirit. This spirit ruins relationships. I'll tell you what, it ruins families. It does a lot, a lot of damage, okay? There's a lot of reading with this, so you guys bear with me. I wanted everybody to be able to get a really good picture. So that way um, you can um, have a very, very good understanding. There could be so many teachings on the Jezebel spirit that it's not even funny. So I'm gonna try and get through this so we all have a good understanding because this spirit is very much at work all the time, especially in relationships, even in the government and worldwide, okay? Okay, so. The name Jezebel in Hebrew means untouched, untouchable, non-cohabitating, without husband, adulterous, base, licentious, immoral, and lawlessness. That's what the very name means. This spirit is characterized by domination, control, and manipulation. Jezebel has picked off and neutralized unsuspecting leaders and ministers through sexual immorality, physical sickness, debilitating fear, failure, discouragement, and depression. She causes ministry burnout. The Jezebel spirit exercises a major role in the power of evil over our nation today, like I mentioned before. We see this in the feminist movement and transgenderism and so many other activist movements like BLM and whatnot and so forth. However, Jezebel isn't only in operation in these antichrist movements. It is in the church, family, and maybe even you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves, whether you be in faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not that you're not, know your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Lamentations 3, 40. It says, let us examine and probe our ways and let us return to the Lord. Psalm 139, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Galatians 6, 4 says, but let each one test his own work. And then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. Matthew 7, 1 says, judge not that you be not judged. Matthew 7, 2, for with that judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Matthew 7, 3, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in your own eye? Right? Matthew 7, 4, or how wilt you say to your brother, let me pull the mote out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own. 
thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then you should see clearly to help your brother get it out of his eye. This teaching is on the Jezebel spirit. However, my plea today as I teach on the spirit is for self-examination first. This in itself will wreck the Jezebel as this spirit thrives on lack of repentance and the spirit wants to keep you far away from self-examination. This in itself wrecks her. Like I mentioned before, this spirit wants you to look at everyone else and their Jezebelic behavior. This is one of the tactics of this foul spirit. So, Lord, we just ask you right now in Jesus' name that you would show everybody in here um, what they need to see. We all choose together in agreement to examine our hearts, to listen, to receive. We all remember, Lord, that we separate the spirit from the person. We separate the spirits from ourselves, right? We don't judge the person by the spirit, right? A person is a person. We all need grace. We all fall short of the glory of God, right? Th these spirits operate because of sin generational curses, pain, tr uh, trauma, okay? So we have compassion for ourselves and for other people who are demonized, right? And just like my husband said, I've had many demons cast out of me. That's why I stand up here today and preach and teach about it because that's what set me free, hallelujah. I was a hurt, damaged little girl and I got demonized. That's what happens. That's what the enemy wants. He came to still kill and destroy, but Jesus Christ came that we would have life and we would have it more abundantly, hallelujah. Like brother Randy was saying, let us um, you know, not have pride that there's nothing wrong with us or right or like uh, Charles said with unbelief. We need to be able to examine ourselves, okay? But we don't agree with pride. We we want to look within and ask God to take every wicked thing out of us in Jesus' name and to heal our heart and our soul. Amen? Amen. The spirit of Jezebel seeks to destroy true worship, the family, morality, and the God-ordained role of male authority. It misleads and corrupts the church and seeks to neutralize the life of prophets, pastors, and other male authorities. This spirit is obviously genderless and works well through male and female hosts. Jezebel murdered and hated the word of God. Today, she kills off God's prophets or cuts off the influence of the true prophet. Jezebel was very religious. Her religion is idolatry and worship of false gods and the works done by one's own hands. Okay? It's not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. It is not the work of our own hands. Hallelujah, it's the finger of God. Thank you, Jesus. First Kings 18, 19, 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah ate at Jezebel's table. Jezebel was a very prominent supporter of religious work. First Kings 19, one through two. Ahab told Jezebel everything Elisha had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Jezebel sent a messenger to Elisha. May the gods deal with me ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like that of one of them. The advocating nature of Ahab makes Jezebel effective. Now this teaching is geared towards Jezebel, but it is going to have a bit of Ahab in it as well. Okay. But this is more geared towards Jezebel. Now, without Ahab, there can't be a Jezebel. All right. Jezebel resists and opposes godly authority. This spirit desires to control and exercise power over everyone. This spirit sets itself against the Elishas in particular. The Elisha spirit of the end times will stir up and expose Jezebel spirits. This spirit is negative, sarcastic, rude, uses threats and intimidation. This spirit doesn't want you to submit to godly authority. It wants to rule. It is jealous, envious, and loves to cause strife doesn't take responsibility and loves to twist words and blame shift. It attacks relationships, finances, health, and reputation. The intention is to make an Elisha leave his appointed God-ordained position where he belongs. This spirit wants to do the same thing as every other spirit, right? This spirit is after your calling, you guys. Mm -hmm. Now that we have learned some things about this spirit and we have prayed and asked God to show us of any wicked ways within ourselves, I would also like to pray that God shows us if this spirit as it is at work and other people around us. If you are being attacked by this spirit, it's a good chance that it is operating through other people around you. 
It is always good to first examine and then repent, to remove any logs in our own eyes so then we can see clearly to help our brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember, we separate the spirits from the people. It's not the person, okay? We have compassion and love, and we want to help our brothers and sisters, right, without judging. 1 Peter 5, 5 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may be to devour, okay? Ephesians 6, 12 through 20, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. As I continue this teaching, I recommend that everybody remain completely humble and separate the person from the spirit. Continue to examine yourself and also be aware of those around you who are operating in agreement with this spirit. Remember, it's all about agreement. Who are you going to agree with? Do you agree with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, or do you agree with the demonic spirit? Okay. And remember, it's all agreement. It's if we want to simplify it, it's agreement. We come, we come out of agreement, we repent, we kick the demons out, and then we don't agree again, right? And they're going to try to come back, wouldn't you, right? They're going to try to come back. It's not a, a one deal and, it, and it's done. Like my husband said, we're going to be in war till we go to heaven, right? That's just the fact of the matter. Everybody needs to accept that now. It's not going to be a pony walk, all right? No, 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 no. We're in a war. We're in a battle. It's going to be warfare day in and day out. Hallelujah. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit to tread upon scorpions and serpents and all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm us. Hallelujah. And every trial and every tribu tribulation that the enemy brings, God does what? He uses it for our good. Hallelujah. He builds up character and patience and, and, and it's a good conduct, right? It's all for our good. We fall, the righteous will fall seven times and rise again. What happens when a person falls? You can either fall and agree with the enemy, or you can get back up, learn from it, so you don't do it again. Amen. Isn't that what we tell our children, right? It's the same thing our daddy tells us, right? Our good father in heaven. Amen. And if we ask for a piece of bread, is he going to give us a stone? No. Hallelujah. You have not because you ask not. Okay. And even with the uh, teaching about faith and unbelief, we can ask for faith. There's gifts of faith. Okay. In the Holy spirit, faith is a powerful thing. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move a whole mountain. Hallelujah. So don't be no scared of no demons, right? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's all about agreement. Remember that that helps simplify things. When you go day in and day out, don't agree with the lies of the enemy. Agree with the word of God. Amen. First Kings 19, three through four, Elisha was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Jezebel causes fear, debilitating discouragement, depression, and immobilization. This spirit's purpose is to cause you to give up and throw in the towel. This spirit works with depression, hopelessness, and despair. 1 Kings 21, 5 through 7. Ahab's wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because Naboth said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel, his wife, said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up, eat, cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth of the Jezreelite. Jezebel controls by scorn and sarcasm, takes matters into her, her, her own hands. Jezebel usurps her husband's or her leader's authority, manipulates and controls leadership, goes after the position of leadership as a base to work from. Okay, now, didn't I, I, we preached about marriage yesterday and about submission and submitting to our husbands. This spirit obviously works in marriages, right? Okay. And it can be either way, the male or the female, okay? And remember that there is an Ahab where there's a Jezebel. My husband spoke about being a good husband and about passivity, right? And how you can't be a passive husband. You have to take authority. You are the head of the home. You make the decisions. You are the final authority. You hear from God and you lead your wife. You are the covering and Christ covers you, 
Amen. Amen. Not the wife. The wife is, it doesn't run the show, but let me tell you guys, sometimes our kids, we sometimes households allow the kids to run the show, right? They don't feel like dealing with it. I don't feel like arguing. I don't, I don't, I just want to go to my room and shut the door. I, you know, when they want their way, right? Oftentimes Jezebel works in our children, y'all. Okay. It, it can work in our children. And so, you know, what the antidote to this is, is the Holy spirit and power, right? In Jesus name, we take a stand against the spirit. We don't allow it to work. Okay. And that's what I'm going to keep on teaching about. So we can know how to stand up against the spirit how to stop it from operation in our marriage, in the workplace, um, with our children, with uh, ministries, all of these things. This spirit comes after relationships, like I told you before. Amen. Okay. She goes, this spirit goes after leadership as a base to work from, uses power plays, lies, accuses, and manipulates. We'll even use a religious occasion to do the dirty work. She accuses others of what she has done. The Jezebel spirit is narcissistic. Does anybody have any narcissists in their family? She believes that the end justifies the means. She condones sin, even murder, to get what she wants or what she believes is right. Jezebel is the cause of many abortions. Jezebel still commits murder with her mouth. The words she speaks are hurtful, and they are intended to cause spiritual death. We break the power of all word curses in Jesus' name. Amen. That pierced your soul that hurt you, that stabbed you. We break that in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for healing your people's souls. Amen. That's how she operates today. Okay. Also through actual murder, you know, as well. But if it's not going to be physical murder, it's, it's intention is spiritual murder, right? So you throw in the towel and give up. So you're hurt. If you have plans on going into ministry, you need to know about the spirit. Amen. You need to know about the spirit anyway, because of your family, your marriage, but even going into ministry. Okay. She sows seeds of doubt. Her words are sharp and they cut deep when confronted. Oftentimes the spirit, instead of apologizing, will project onto you. It will say that you are the one with the Jezebel spirit. This spirit in operation through people in your life will sow many seeds of doubt with the intent to cause you to begin to question yourself. This is known as gaslighting. Never takes responsibility and will twist words to make its point. This spirit takes away the vineyards, ministry, or fruitfulness of good men or women and removes or neutralizes them and kills their spiritual or physical sons. In 2 Kings 9.22, it says, How can there be peace, Jehu replied, as long as all the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother Jezebel are around? Jehu's name means Yahweh is God. Hallelujah. Jehu knew the roots of Jezebel. It was witchcraft and idolatry, okay? Remember, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So if you're not actually practicing the craft of witchcraft as the craft, you can practice witchcraft through rebellion, right? And then we know that um, stubbornness is as idolatry and insubordination, and it is iniquity, okay? Then Jehu went to Jezreel. When Jezebel heard about it, she painted her eyes, arranged her hair, and looked out of a window. As Jehu entered the gate, she asked, have you come in peace, you murderer of your master? Jezebel uses seduction, womanly wiles, or sexual means to control men. When in operation through a male, the male would use flattery and also be seductive. Oftentimes, there's lots of spirits of lust. Oftentimes when pastors have this spirit, there, there will be people sitting in the congregation that are, that are having lustful thoughts. Okay. And the lustful thoughts are you get soul tied to where, where you're sitting, right. And what congregation you're sitting in. Okay. And so we have to know that we forgive. And when we leave, we forgive them, we bless them and we break soul ties with every person in the congregation. Okay. But there can, there's a lot of seduction with this spirit seducing. And oftentimes we can think that it's us and we're the ones being attacked. So be aware what environments you're at when you're getting attacked with these lustful thoughts and stuff. Is it happening at, when you're at home? Oftentimes it's not. Sometimes, you know, you can go a long time without, and you go to the specific place or around a specific person and they start to happen. It's not always you. Okay. It could be discernment just from being around a person that has these seductive, lustful spirits. Okay. 
that's very helpful because sometimes we think it's us and we're like, oh, I've, God, I've been delivered of this, you know, I've repented and whatnot and so forth. So I wanted you guys to also know that as well, but we love people. We give grace and mercy. People have spirits because they've been deceived. We can always be deceived too, right? We're not, we all have not made it yet. So remember to always have love and compassion and mercy and to forgive and to bless. Hold no charge against people, okay? Remember to forgive, remember to love, okay? Forgiveness is a beautiful gift and don't we need it? Don't we need forgiveness? Yes, so let's give it just as much as we need it, amen? When in operation through a male, the male will use flattery, be seductive. When that does not work, uh, they'll use shame, sarcasm, scorn, and arrogance. Jezebel was arrogant and sarcastic to the very end of her life. Also, the Lord was ministering to me that this could have even happened in past relationships. People could have been controlled. There, your People in past relationships could have had Jezebel spirits, right? and that, that it hurt you. Remember to forgive them, bless them, break soul ties with them in Jesus' name, okay? Now, uh, shame, sarcasm, scorn, and arrogance. She was arrogant to the very, very end. In 2 Kings 9, 32 through 23, he looked up at the window and called out, who is on my side? Amen. First Kings 18, 21, Elisha said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. Throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down and some of her blood splattered um, on the wall and the horses as they trampled her underfoot. Jehu confronts without fear. Okay. We need to confront without fear, you guys. Like I said, the antidote to this spirit is confrontation, holy spirit filled confrontation. We have to stand up. We have to speak out. We have to stop this spirit. Don't be controlled. Don't be an Ahab. Don't be passive. Be kind, be polite, be respectful, but have boundaries. Okay. Oftentimes the spirit can operate through in-laws into your marriage, into your home. Okay. It can operate and you have to put your foot down and say, I respectfully am not going to allow you to usurp my husband's authority. He is my husband. You are my father or you are my mother. I bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. God loves order. He is a God of order. We have order in our homes. We can't expect to have a calling and a ministry and go into other people's churches and start casting out demons and stuff. No, you have, there's an order y'all. We can't go, you know, like my husband does. He goes to work. Amen. He can do it there, right? Unless there's a rule specifically saying, which some places there are, okay? We'll do it on the side, have coffee, whatnot, and so forth. But there's order. There needs to be order in our homes. The husband is the head, okay? Then the wife, then the children. We don't allow, allow our in-laws to meddle in our marriages and our relationships. We don't allow our children to run our homes. We don't go into other people's churches and try to run the show there. We The pastor is the pastor of that church, amen? Okay? So, if, you know, let God start up a ministry in your own life, in your own home, right? Don't try to go around to other people's houses and do that. Amen? Amen. Jay who confronts without fear, he knows his authority. Do you know your authority? Do you guys know who you are in Christ? Is there some Jezebel spirits that need to be confronted in your life? Will you be like Jehu? The most effective weapon against the enemy is to be in right standing with God. Amen. That means to live a repentant and holy life. That is the best weapon against the enemy. Okay. So we always say, be quick to repent and be quick to forgive, right? What's the key word? Quick. Don't let offense hook you. Don't be hooked. Don't take the bait. If it happens, yeah, catch it quick. Catch it quick. Learn the tactics of the enemy. Okay. Learn when, okay, I got sick. I didn't feel good. I agreed with it. I stayed in bed. I got attacked with lust, then gluttony. Okay, so what do I do next time? When I'm starting to get sick, don't agree with it. Be aware the enemy's trying to attack me. He's starting off with the sickness. Then he's going to come in with the lust or the gluttony or whatever. What I'm saying is when you get attacked and you fall, examine the situation. What choices did you make? What did you do differently? What did you fail to do? Amen. Hallelujah. God has given you sharp minds, right? He's blessed us. We have the mind of Christ. Let's use it. Thank you, Jesus. The most effect, like I said, it's stand in right standing with God. The second is to know who you are in Christ. 
A lot of people have no idea who they are in Christ. We are sons and daughters of the creator of the heavens and the earth. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are the apple of his eye. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, right? Yeah, you men are the prophet, priest, and kings of your home. You women are Proverbs 31 women. Hallelujah. Your children will wake up and call you blessed. Amen. We submit to the word of God. Hallelujah. He is a good, good father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So know who you are. Speak the word out loud in your home over yourself. I am a child of God. I am a daughter of the most high. Hallelujah. I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. And I love not my life unto death. Speak life. Amen. In order for you to know these two things, which is being in right standing in God and knowing who you are in Christ, you need to know the word of God. Amen. You need to have faith. How do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Read your word. Listen to your word. Speak the word. Amen. Saturate yourself in the word of God. Of course, this is meant for believers who not only believe, but also make Jesus Lord over your life. Believing in God and making him Lord over your life are two different things. You can believe and live however you want. Amen. We must believe and then make him Lord over our life. Amen. Jezebel was thrown down and completely destroyed. Does Jezebel need to be destroyed within you? Do you need to repent? Come out of agreement? Ask God to show you. Ask him to help you. 2 Kings 9, 34 through 37. Take care of that cursed woman and bury her, Jehu said. When they went out to bury her, they found nothing except for her skull, her feet, and her hands. They told Jehu, who said, this is the word of the Lord, that he spoke through his servant Elisha. On the plot of the ground at Jezreel, dogs will devour Jezebel's flesh. Jezebel's body will be like dung, so that no one will be able to say this is Jezebel. Jezebel's destruction was so complete that she was unrecognizable. I prophesy complete destruction of this spirit in your lives today in Jesus' name. Today, the Jezebel spirit is being thrown down, trampled, and completely destroyed in your life, in your marriage, your household, in your family, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? Amen. The hounds of heaven are being loosed for complete destruction of every Jezebel spirit that is in operation. The Jezebelic curses on the bloodline are being broken and severed in Jesus' name. The cross of Christ is being applied and completely received in your life. Every sickness and infirmity caused by this spirit will be leaving your body and your family's body in Jesus' name. We agree. Do we agree with the word of God? Do we agree with the truth? Hallelujah. We receive it. We believe and receive in Jesus' name. The destruction of this spirit in your life will be done to such a degree that it will you will be unrecognizable. Amen. Hallelujah. It will be like you're a new person all over again. Today, the Holy Spirit in you will rise up. You will agree instead of grieve. Amen. Isn't it a better thing to agree with the Holy Spirit rather than grieve the Holy Spirit? Amen. Then it feel bad when we're not obedient. It comes with like, oh, I should have did that. I'm sorry, Lord. It's so much easier just to do it. And then when we do it, it's like, man, I really built that up to be such a bigger deal than it was. And it was so easy and worked out lovely, right? Or you get the privilege to see God set people free and deliver them from demons. And just because you, you know, were obedient and went up and talked to the person, amen? It's a lot easier. So let's agree with the Holy Spirit and not grieve the beautiful Holy Spirit. Amen. The boldness and authority of who you are in Christ will not only be recognized, but embraced with action. Amen. I, I come into agreement and speak that over you guys. I speak the life of that over y'all in Jesus name, a holy boldness. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as lions. Hallelujah. And who do we have behind us? The lion of Judah. Hallelujah. The holy one of Israel, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, Jesus. You will be able to be like Elisha and Jehu, standing up in power in every Jezebelic relationship, in yourself, in your family, in your church, and in your nation. Hallelujah. God is saying, my people need to not tolerate this wicked spirit anymore. No more fear of man. 
We break the power of fear of man right now in Jesus name. No more fear of rejection. No more insecurity. I break the power of insecurity in Jesus name. No more rejection. You are a child of Jehovah Gabor. It's time to stand up and be who God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we come out of agreement with all of these demonic spirits and we come out of agreement with Jezebel and we we're taking back destinies today, right? We're stepping into our callings. We will no longer tolerate or placate these foul spirits in our lives anymore. We will not allow them to cause destruction in our family, in our homes, at our workplace. We don't want to be miserable. We want to be blessed. We are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. Amen. We are burning up every Jezebelic web of witchcraft and deception. We will no longer cower down and be controlled or manipulated by foul spirits, right? In Jesus' name. We cut the cords of that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We will be bold and led by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Revelations 2, 18 through 20. To the angel of the church in Thyatira, right? These are the words of the Son of God. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. This is what God had against this church. They were doing great, right? God said, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. We can be tolerating Jezebel spirit in the midst of good deeds, love, faith, service, perseverance, and being busier for God than we have ever been before. I was attending a church where this spirit was running rampant from the pastor down. This is partly where I got a lot of this teaching from. I was at a church where Jezebel was running rampant. It wasn't only the pastor, but a lot of the congregation. Okay. Now, obviously it is more subtle. It's not always an obvious outright thing. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to notice it, to catch it and to realize it. Right. That's why I do this teaching to help you guys. Right. And because that's what we do. We share with one another what we learn to help our brothers and sisters in Christ. So um, it's, it's subtle. It's not always just outright obvious. The pastor isn't going to be encouraging sexual immorality from the pulpit, right? Even though that is happening, right? In a lot of churches, there's, that is happening, definitely. But those are more obvious to discerning Christians. I'm talking about the subtle, the not so obvious. The pastor's not going to be up there outright talking about se sexual immorality from the pulpit, okay? But anyhow... Maybe when you're at church, like I was telling you guys before, you're having lustful thoughts, all right? It's only when you're at church, okay? Also, um, the church that I was at was advocating for drinking halal coffee, okay? Now, halal is um, it's, uh, Islamic certified, like kosher, like Jewish food, like kosher, right? This is halal. And so that's actually food sacrificed to an idol right it's not to our god there's halal meat markets and whatnot so forth y'all might have seen it it's h-a-l-a-l -L. okay that's halal all right and that's where they go to buy their food because it is sacrificed there's a certain way to kill the animal a prayer they say over it so what is that that's food sacrificed to an idol right that's exactly what this was happening in revelation it happens today okay so there's halal coffee don't drink stuff like that okay Look and research what you're consuming, like Randy was talking about last night. You know, if you see weird symbolism and stuff, look it up. Get your phone out. We have Wikipedia, Google, all right? Know what you're partaking in, okay? Thank you, Jesus. So anyway, um, so also the church was participating in New Age cleanses uh, for health rather than a biblical fast. This spirit of Jezebel came in to this church they were meaning, they meant well. They wanted to do um, health cleanse, but the health cleanse was a new age health cleanse. The source of it, practice new age, was not a believer. They took partake of it. I believe that's how the spirit came in and began to operate in the church personally. The spirit matured and went without being noticed for so many years, okay, that the, they were, ended up being completely blinded and unable to see the word for what it says, believing that we could bless halal coffee and make it right, right? And we can't do that. Remember, Randy was talking about that last night too with the Hawaii rock, okay? We can't bless what God has cursed. 
okay? We can't, we can't redeem yoga. Yoga is not holy. It's not ever going to be holy. It belongs to another religion, right? Okay? There's things we can't redeem. They belong to other gods that are not our God. We don't yoke up with that in Jesus' name, okay? But this spirit can come in and cause that deception. This, this, these it's seducing spirits that seduce you to do things that are not of God, seduce you to away from our God, okay? Amen. Jezebel claims to be inspired, to have a word of God, to be a prophet or a prophetess. She beguiles into sexual vice. She is an immoral woman. She beguiles into pagan practices, okay? That's what one of her characteristics. So we should never be at a church where they're allowing stuff like this. We should know better. And if, if we bring it to them and they don't repent, then we need to pray about if we're supposed to stay and pray for them and intercede or if we need to leave, right? Amen. Because we don't want to be yoked up with that. We don't want to be deceived. We need to be aware. Amen. Okay, so um, she, she beguiles and seduces people into pagan practices and ways of the world alongside of the things of God. Okay, it's deception. It's not outright obvious. Revelations 2, 21 through 23. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. Would you want to sit in the church if that judgment's coming on? Did you just hear what this said? That's why we left because it says right here, I'll read it again. I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways, okay? Her ways, adultery doesn't always have to be the physical action of a sexual encounter. You can commit adultery spiritually on the Lord by practicing other practices, right? By going astray. We're married to the Lord. He's our bridegroom. We're the bride of Christ. If we go out of that into other practices that are pagan, we are committing adultery, okay, on our Lord. Okay, so that's what that means. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Jezebel is usually unwilling to repent. As a result of her sin, Jezebel will suffer. Others will suffer. Children will die. Jesus judges the heart and mind of his people, his church. This verse here is exactly why we left our old church. There was no repentance or acknowledgement on the halal coffee or the new age cleanse. God tells us we are not to tolerate Jezebel. We were not willing to commit adultery against our Lord. This can be spiritually, like I said before. For example, taking a new age cleanse rather than a biblical fast. Okay? We have the good cleanse, and it's biblical, and it's water-only fasting, right? Or however the Lord guides you to fast. But a biblical fast is a water fast, right? People do dry fasting, too, for like two or three days. But anyhow, why would we come to a place where we would allow a new age cleanse to replace the beautiful practice that our Lord gave us and that he did himself? Amen? Amen. It's a wide open door for lots of demons to come in. Okay? All right. Anyhow, so Revelations 2, 24. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold on to what I have until you come, until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from, authority from my father. I will also give him the morning star. Amen. Don't we want the morning star? What is at stake? is authority over the nations, the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ into all nations. Elisha was one of the most powerful men in the Bible. He had a word from God for idolatrous Israel in that day. He challenged the people. Why hesitate between two opinions? If God is God, serve him only. The Jezebel spirit will oppose modern day, day Elijahs who are preparing the way of the Lord. Therefore, one of Satan's end time strategies is to stir, stir up the spirit of Jezebel, to challenge the spirit of Elisha and to rob the church of the work of Elisha. The church can expect increasing assault by the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel attacked and demoralized Elisha. So present day Elisha's will also be attacked for calling the church to faithfulness. Now a true prophet is going to call the church to faithfulness. 
Amen. Holiness, the true word of God. Amen. They speak out in boldness and, and for holiness and for truth and love and power and authority. Amen. Amen. Okay. And we are called to faithfulness and we call God's people in church to faithfulness in Jesus name. God is preparing a new generation of spiritual leaders to challenge the prophets of Baal in our society and in the church. These Elishas will be overcomers in their own revived lives. Muster the army of the Lord and prepare the church for the return of the son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Holy One of Israel. What a day that will be. Amen. Don't you want to be on the right side? Or do you want to be with Jezebel in a sick bed? No, no. We choose life. We choose Jesus. We choose the Holy Spirit. Amen. Elisha challenged Baal, the rain god, the god of Ahab. As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be either neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. Today, the authority of spiritual confrontation is needed. Okay? Today, the authority of spiritual confrontation is needed. Okay? We, that's it. I know some people don't like confrontation. But did Elisha and Jehu confront? Yeah. Did the prophets of God confront? Yeah. We break the power of the fear of confrontation in Jesus' name. We, we choose to stand up in holy boldness and the authority of God. God wants to restore the authority of the church to look Satan in the eye and say, thus saith the Lord, you shall not have dominion here because God is God. Jezebel seeks to destroy true worship. It misleads and corrupts the church and seeks to neutralize the life of prophets, pastors, and other male authority by any means sexual enticement, physical illness, financial misconduct, debilitating discouragement, which we call burnout. Jezebel is out to destroy the family, morality, and the God-ordained authority. It is the spirit behind disorder in churches and families and feminism, sexually or immoral lifestyles, and abortion on demand. The Jezebel spirit attacks, controls, dominates, manipulates, especially male authorities, husbands, pastors, or even your boss. When in operation in a male, the husband will control, is not a gentleman, doesn't protect, honor, or listen to the wife's needs and concerns. A husband needs to respect and honor, um, a husband needs respect and honor from his wife. A wife needs to feel loved, secured, and protected, right? And provided for. And a husband needs respect and honor, okay? So remember that. Are you respecting and honoring your husband, Okay. Husbands, are you giving your wife security? Are you a gentleman? Are you gentle? Are you brush, uh, controlling, rough, brash, hard, insensitive? Okay, let's examine ourselves. Let's examine our marriages. Maybe this can help your friends' marriages. Amen? A husband needs respect and honor from his wife. The wife needs security and love from her husband. Queen Jezebel usurped political earthly authority of the kingdom. Jezebel in the church at Thyatira usurped spiritual authority. The ultimate goal is to conquer or neutralize the, the prophet, like I said before. You may be a prophet of God that Jezebel is trying to neutralize. Amen. We are all called to speak the word of God. Amen. We are all called to do these things. It's not just a few special people that went to theological school, right? We are uh, the commission of Christ to fulfill it. All believers. It's, it's all who believe in my name will cast out demons, right? Raise the dead, right? Cleanse the lepers, heal the sick. You freely receive, now freely give, okay? The commission is for all who believe, amen? Amen. And the Holy Spirit teaches you and guides you and leads you. And oftentimes God will also send men and women in your life to help you, amen? And I encourage you to know who those people are and to um, do good in the relationships with them. Honor them, honor them, respect them, love them, listen to them, be teachable, amen? Be correctable, okay? So the ultimate goal is to conquer and neutralize the prophet because a, a discerning pastor or prophet or Christian leader is Jezebel's greatest enemy. We thank you for discernment, Lord. So I pray that today will be confirmation for many. You've been seeing it, feeling it, knowing it, you were just, you just weren't sure what to do. Today is the day that you rise up and put your foot down against this spirit. God is saying no more. This is enough. It is time to take a stand against this spirit. It's time to have that conversation that you've been putting off. It's time to start that fast. It's time to apologize. It's time to admit. It's time to confess. Let Jehovah rise and the enemy be scattered in Jesus' name. I prophesy every wall around every heart to come down now in Jesus' name. 
all divides in relationships in the name of Jesus are being removed. I prophesy that, it, that you'll have true love in Jesus' name. If you truly love them and care, you will tell them the truth, right? If we have somebody operating in this in our ministry, at work, at home, uh, marriage, whatever, if we really love our friends, if it could be a friend, we really love them, we'll tell them the truth, right? A true friend is honest, right? Amen. Because we want them to be free. And we want them to tell us if we need to be told, right? We want to be honest with each other. And we need to be honest with each other. Amen. I pray for honesty to come forth in you in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit will help you. Okay. Jezebel will cause their husband or wife to doubt their decisions, capability, manhood, or womanhood, worth, etc. Jezebels will not submit to God's delegated authority. They control with scorn, sarcasm, sharp tongue, public humiliation, emotional outbursts, nagging, and endless demands. Nothing is ever enough. Jezebels are not always brash, overt, or aggressive, or bossy. Sometimes they're more subtle, outwardly gracious, but just as determined to have their own way. That's it. They want their way. We don't want our way. We want Yahweh, not our way. Amen? Amen. They Sometimes they're subtle, okay? Jezebels may resort to control by tears, fear, rejection, guilt, pouting, silence. Sometimes we control with our emotions, y'all, especially in marriage, right? I don't feel good or... Um, uh, silence the silent treatment is what they call it right or maybe you have a, a sibling that hasn't called you in a year right you, you can only call them okay that's a jezebel spirit it's controlled by silence okay amen amen so they they control by fear sickness or self-pity fear insecurity and self-preservation fear is the principal entry for the jezebel spirit to vulnerable threatened people jezebel seek to control in order to feel secure that's why we control when we do. It's because of the fear and we want to feel secure. So we default to control, okay? So we remove the default of control in Jesus' name in our lives. We smash the default buttons in Jesus' name. Bitterness that gets into these wounds, especially against men because of abandonment or abuse. This spirit of Jezebel often takes up residence in a person after a wound from the past. Usually rejection or insecurity in some form. Jezebels are tremendously subtle and deceptive. They intend to get what they want at all costs, but this intention can be cleverly disguised. Jezebels use flattery, saying what you want to hear to win you over to their domination. Jezebels are masters of manipulation by guilt, gifts, innuendo, ins insinuation, undermining, influence, or dis discrediting. They may exhibit false humility or submission while they feed their own pride and seek to get their own way. They dominate, control, and manipulate to gain their own agenda. This mocks God's ordained order because it is not true heart submission, just pretense. Jezebel uses flirtation and womanly wiles. They are extremely jealous of anyone that they perceive to be a, a threat. Okay, oftentimes the Jezebel spirit is there because rejection early in life, abandonment or emotional remoteness by a father or mother, perhaps an illness, maybe a death, addiction, premature death, okay, neglect because of birth order. Sometimes when you're the middle child, right? Or that you're the youngest or the oldest depends, you know, the birth order. Maybe your mother paid more attention to your oldest sibling. Okay. That can cause it. Loneliness, isolation, rejection by significant others, physical abuse, or maybe even because of your physical appearance, resistance to authority because of bad relationships or bad experience with authority figures in school, government, church, or family. Correction done in the wrong way or abuse. Jezebel spirits can emit jealousy into a room. They can play people against each other. They cause webs. They're called Jezebelic webs, webs of deception, confusion, gaslighting, manipulation, okay? Witchcraft webs, rebellion, insubordination, usurping, okay? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, all right? It's, you know, the whole, I'll do it my way instead of God's way, okay? It's not our will, not our will, but God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, amen? Okay, we don't want to get what we want. We want what God wants for us. We don't know. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. If there is intercession, sometimes it is motivated by a controlling spirit. It is witchcraft. There's such thing as soulish prayers. If you're praying your will upon somebody else instead of God's will, what is that? You want your way. We can even do that in prayer, right? It's a soulish prayer. That's witchcraft, okay? We pray God's will, amen? We pray for the heart of father over people. We don't pray what we want them to do, right? <laughs> Amen. Okay, so 
Anyhow, every Jezebel problem is an Ahab, Ahab problem like I mentioned before. Are you being an Ahab to someone's Jezebel? What did Ahab do wrong? He should not have abdicated spiritual leadership nor his responsibility of head of his house and his nation because his family and the nation were destroyed because of it. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden, like my husband spoke of yesterday. Adam sat there and watched Eve be beguiled by the serpent. He was passive. He didn't stand up and take authority and operate in power and say no. He let Eve eat the fruit and then he ate it with her. Okay, that's Ahab. Ahab, the king, did the same thing. He let Jezebel run the show, and it destroyed family and nation. Don't let Ahab in your life, passivity, destroy your home, your workplace, or whatnot and so forth, okay? The leader who will stand against Jezebel because of his family and the nation um, must have keen discernment in identifying spirits, a strong commitment to rightly divide the word, amen, of God, and a strong sense of submission to his or own, her own accountability. Amen. Do you have someone you submit to? Are you submitting to your husband? Is, does your husband have a spiritual father? Amen. Let's submit one to another. Amen. Amen. Okay. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you can, you have discernment, right? We need to tap into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit. Then we, we need to, you know, read the word and get discernment. Ask the Holy Spirit, show me, help me to see. Okay. Help me to rightly divide the word. In Jesus' name. Okay, so we pray for Ahabs to be healed and strong and released in the fullness of God's purposes for their lives. Amen. Much, fe uh, much male-female rivalry is rooted in the control issue of Jezebel's spirit. Rather than believe God to give their husband's wisdom to lead the family in God-given position, they take matters into their own hands. We trust God with our husbands, you guys. Okay? He's got it. He created them to be men. Amen. He created them to lead and to cover. They'll do just fine. We let go of that fear and that control. All right? Trust in God. I did it, and it's great. My husband's doing a fabulous job. I, I couldn't be more happy. Amen. And our children are thriving because of it. Amen. Yeah, he agreed to, to be the authority and the head. I agreed to submit and to let him lead and trust God. And our family is blessed. Our home is blessed. Our children are blessed. Amen. It's worth it. It's worth it. Don't agree with fear and, and uh, control. All right, women? Amen. Or men either. All right. And trying to get around God's order, they open up the whole family to satanic attack. Okay. So that's imp important, you guys, to know the order of the home. Like I said, again, when you are out of order in home and church, wherever it's at, that's an open door for the enemy. Oftentimes this is overlooked. We know not to do pornography. We know not to lie. We know not to lust. We know these things, but oftentimes we don't realize order. Okay, and we need to be in order. We need to be subjected, submitting to one another. We need to honor pastors, the order they have in the church. We need to order, uh, have order in our home, everywhere we go, at, at work. There's always an order, amen? And we submit to that. We don't usurp. That's control, and it's not of God, okay? All right, I'm almost done, you guys. So first, I would like to ask, if you see any of these characteristics in yourself, say, Lord, help me to see. God is still saying, if my people are, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Amen. How many know that your body's your land, your home's your land, your land's your land? Amen. He'll heal you. Amen. And your children, your home. Thank you, Jesus. This, this spirit operates through soul wounds of rejection, also through the bloodline. Oftentimes it's generational. Oftentimes your mother did it and your mother's mother did it and their mother did it or their father or their father, father. Okay. Fathers can be Jezebel spirits too. It's control, manipulation, domination. Amen. Amen. Witchcraft, rebellion. Okay. Nevertheless, the soul wounds are there. The absence of the father or mother in the home or watching your mother usurping authority over your father. The Jezebel spirit works right alongside with pride, Leviathan, and also the kingdom of self. Okay, who knows there's a kingdom of self? Me, myself, and I. All about me, 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 me. Selfishness, self-centeredness, not of God, amen? What does the Bible say? Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. Your marriage will not work if you do not deny yourself, amen, right? It just won't. You can't have two selfish people in a marriage. <laughs> it's not gonna work, right? Nope, or any relationship, right? Relationships are two ways. 
Amen. Okay. So specifically self-hatred. Jezebel loves to work with self-hatred. You know why? Because Jezebel can do such wicked, horrible things like say the horrible things. This is a spirit. You guys remember to separate spirit from the person, even if it's your, even if it's yourself. Okay. You say the bad thing. It comes out, it stabs, it pierces, it hurts in that fight, in that battle. Okay. Then there's the wounds. You, and then you're ashamed that you did it. You feel bad. Then self-hatred comes in. Okay. And Jezebel and self-hatred work, work right hand in hand. So, and also um, a rebellion and all that. But self-hatred is a very bad one. And the reason why is because it's going to cause autoimmune diseases in your body. It'll cause your body to begin to fight against itself. That's what self-hatred does. That's sickness, disease. We don't want that, right? Okay. Amen. Okay? So we just repent and we ask God to forgive us. He will help us. Okay? The Jezebel spirit works along with pride. Also along the kingdom of self, self-hatred, all of the nastiness that spews forth, you feel bad about it, okay? This demon has a hard, this demon causes it to make it really hard for you to apologize when you've done wrong, okay? That's pride also, okay? Or ask for forgiveness. The self-hatred demon will come right along and make you hate yourself every time over and over again. And it's a nasty cycle. Extreme stronghold, Okay? So we are going to repent and take the first step and verbally repent. Honey, you can go ahead and come up now. We're going to do some deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to break the power of this Jezebel spirit and all the unbelief. Yeah. And we know that fear comes in with unbelief, yeah. right? And fear. And what did I say? The, the, the number one entry for the Jezebel spirit is fear. Okay. And fear can hide. We can even buy Cause pride is a false protector as well. When we have pride, these demons act, they're false protectors, they're counterfeits, right? So we think in that pride that we're protected. It's demonic armor. It's not the true protection of God, right? Mm -hmm. It's false. It's counterfeit, okay? So you need to know that. We don't want false protectors, okay? We don't want demonic armor, all right? Okay. So we're going to do a bunch of deliverance on some demons. Um, and you guys, um, you know, Open up your legs, open up your arms, because we can't keep them in, right? We want to be open to let them all out. They come out through breath, okay? Yawning, sneezing, crying, coughing, all right? Okay, so you guys repeat after me. If all who will, you don't have to. If you want to, you can. If you don't, I bless you in Jesus' name too, okay? Okay, so I repent for control. I repent for control. Manipulation. Domination. Domination. Arrogance, pride, pride, sarcastic jabs, sarcastic. rebellion, sarcastic. idolatry, flattery, sarcastic. seduction, sarcastic. murder, murder. Violence, violence, hate, violence. Jealousy, violence. jealousy, envy, envy. strife, violence. war, war. man-hating, woman-hating, scorn, war. selfishness, <clears throat> self-hatred, narcissism, gaslighting, and every other sin. And sometimes our, our ancestors did these things. So it's always good for us to come out of agreement, right? So we can even repent, right? And come out of agreement with our ancestors, okay? Oftentimes we didn't do the sins, but the demons are still there because of the bloodline, right? But oftentimes we did do the sins too. Say, I break every Jezebelic curse in my bloodline. I don't agree with the sins of my forefathers and I forgive my ancestors. Say, I forgive everyone who ever hurt me, controlled me, manipulated me, lied to me, slandered my character, took advantage of me, violated me. I bless them. I release them. I hold no charge against them. I sever every demonic soul tie with the sword of the spirit. I call my soul and spirit back to me. Cleanse and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. And I send their souls and spirits back to them where they belong in Jesus name. I forgive myself for everything I've ever done and I receive the blood of Jesus to cover my sins 
I strip Jezebel of all her demonic armor, all insecurity, rejection, abandonment, neglect, abuse, rape, envy, jealousy, hatred, every lie that I've believed. All right, so I'm going to pray for you guys now. My husband and I are going to command the demons to come out, all right? So we break the power right now in Jesus' name. Go out in Jesus' name. Jezebel, we bind you. We break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go out, Jezebel. We burn up all the Jezebelic webs right now in Jesus' name. In every relationship, in every marriage, every home, we break the power of Jezebelic curse in the bloodline in Jesus' name. We bind the strong man assigned against each one of you, your bloodline, in Jesus' name. We break the power of every Jezebelic spirit, all control, manipulation, domination. We loose the hounds of heaven against Jezebel in your lives, in Jesus' name. We rebuke and bind the spirits of witchcraft, lust, seduction, intimidation, idolatry. Come out in the name of Jesus. We break your power, demons. Let them go. Whoredom connected to Jezebel. We, re we release the spirit of Jehu against Jezebel and her cohorts. We command Jezebel to be thrown down and eaten by heaven's hounds in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we rebuke all spirits of false teaching, false prophecy, idolatry, perversion. In Jesus' name, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Let them go. We break your power in the name of Jesus. We lose tribulation against the kingdom of Jezebel. In Jesus' name, we cut off the assignment of Jezebel against the ministers of God. In the name of Jesus, let him go. Come on out of there. We break your power, Jezebel. We break your power. They belong to God. They will fulfill their destinies and their callings in Jesus' name. We break the power of every destiny stealing, stumbling block, setback, delay. We break the power of backward spirits in the name of Jesus. We break the power of fear of confrontation. We break the power of fear of standing up. We break the power of unbelief in Jesus' name. Out, demons. Go, go, go. Out in Jesus' name. Go, go. Out. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind the strong man of fear, bind the principality accusation that leads to fear, cast out all of the spirits. <clears throat> I, I come against the spirit of fear of abandonment, fear of being alone. I come against the, fear, uh, the spirit of fear of loneliness, fear of another's bitterness. In the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of fear of other words, fear of authority, fear of facial expressions, fear of betrayal, being lied to, fear of being used. In the name of Jesus, we come, come against this, um, the fear of success, trying to control others. Right now, we bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of fear of being controlled, oh, against the spirit of fear of being murdered, being robbed, fearing, fear of being harassed or changed. Mm -hmm. We come against the spirit of fear of the future of tomorrow, fear of war, fear of things you can't control, fear of end time prophecy, I mean, end time lies, fear of loss of confidence, fear of criticism, fear of what others may think. Right now in the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of the fear of failure, humiliation, judgment. Now in the name of Jesus, we command you to come out, manifest, and leave. I come against the spirit of fear of public speaking, performance, rejection, being wrong, being corrected. Right now in the name of Jesus, we come... We command you to come out and leave. I come against a spirit of disapproval, being ashamed, fear of man, fear of being found out, fear of the dark, fear of death. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command you to come out, manifest and come out, you foul spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of fear of family members, fear of father, mother, fear of father, mother-in-law, spouse, fear of yourself. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Right now, I command all spirits that, that operate with fear to manifest and come out in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of fear of a child of not being saved, fear of pregnancy, fear of children, babies, fear of animals. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of God, fear of not pleasing God, fear of punishment. Manifest and come out now in the name of Jesus. Right now we pray against the spirit of fear that God won't answer my prayer. We come against the spirit of fear of deliverance now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Fear of ministry, fear of not being delivered. Come out and manifest right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father God. Fear of responsibility, fear of losing one's salvation, fear of fires, heights, natural disasters, alleg um, allergic reactions right now come out in the name of Jesus. I pray against the fear of chemicals, flying and boats, escalators, elevators now in the name of Jesus. Fear of doctors, hospitals, blood, nose out now in the name of Jesus. Fear of races, cultures, uh, fear of bad news, superstitions, 
fear of insanity come out now in the name of jesus you fear of insanity come out now in the mighty name of jesus come up off of the mind right now in the name of jesus fear of losing memory come out now in the name of jesus fear of loss of life fear of death dying come out now in the name of jesus fear of lack come out now in the name of jesus okay. right now in the name of jesus i come against loss poverty fear of sex fear of losing it fear of another sexuality you come out right now in the name of jesus come off of the private parts in the name of jesus all sexual fear of sexual sins come out now in the name of jesus lust pornography come out now in the name of jesus we command you to come out in god's holy name i come against the fear of relationship fear of loss of spouse fear of loss of ch children fear of abandoning being abandoned by loved ones i command you to come out right now in the name of jesus i'm abandonment we come against you right now and command you to come out in jesus name we come against the fear of suffering drowning choking suffocation urinating yourself come out now in the name of jesus Fear of ha having diarrhea in public, come out now in the name of Jesus. Fear of vomiting, fear of weapons, war, conflict, fear of the enemy, come out now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father God. Fear of disability, fear of disfiguration, fear of disease, fear of dying permanently, come out now. Manifest and come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out through the nose, the ears, the eyes, come out now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I come against the fear of dying, the process of dying, the fear of pain, trembling, worry, anxiety, cowardice, sudden fear. Come out now in the name of Jesus. We come against all suspicious spirits right now in the name of Jesus that call fear. Having suspicious of the people around you, about the people that you love, having suspicion of other people's thoughts, we command you to come out now in the name of Jesus. We come against shyness right now in the name of the Lord. I come against a spirit that keeps you shy, timid, scared, worried worry about what people think not standing up for the word of god we command you to come out right now you evil and foul spirit in the name of jesus we come against you yes father god we come against the fear of, uh, of perfectionism right now in the name of jesus trying to have everything perfect um odc ocd we come against ocd right now in the name of jesus i come against night terrors torments we come against bad dreams right now being scared to go to sleep i come against that spirit right now in the name of jesus we come against horror fearful dreams visions during sleep that are not from god we come against that right now in the name of jesus i come against panic attack phobias in the mighty name of jesus i come against that right now all um squatters that are that are residing in the name of jesus i come against all spirits of fear doubt stress unbelief worry anxiety we command you to leave right now in the mighty name of the lord yeah in jesus name yeah and we remove every block right now in jesus name every block every block every block is removing in the name of Jesus all stumbling blocks. We break your power in the name of Jesus. We bind the we bind unbelief and we break your power in Jesus' name. All spirits of unbelief, doubt. He's not going to do it. Doubting, doubt. We break your power in the name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' name. Go unbelief. Go. Go, go, go. Out in Jesus' name. We break the power of unbelief. We break the power of control and manipulation and flattery and idolatry. We break the power of rebellion in Jesus' name. Go, go, go narcissism. Go gaslighting. Go self-hatred. Go selfishness. Go me, myself, and I. We break your power in the name of Jesus. All selfishness, self-centeredness, self-focus. We break your power in the name of Jesus. Go demons. Go. Out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We speak life to your people, Lord, in Jesus' name, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We speak life. We break the power of death. Hallelujah. We speak life into their homes, into their relationships, into their job place, in the workplace. Hallelujah. We speak life to their vehicles. Hallelujah. To their everything they have, their land. We just speak increase in the name of Jesus. We come into agreement with the beautiful te uh, teaching from Laquita to give to the poor. Hallelujah. Yeah. Isn't that a cheerful giving, yeah. right? Yeah. That's a cheerful thing to do, to give to someone who doesn't have. Hallelujah. Yeah, we speak that in Jesus' name. We come into agreement with that. Hallelujah. We love you guys. We bless you. We speak life. You are more than conquerors. You overcome by the blood of the lamb. You will go forth in power. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit. And you will agree with the Holy Spirit instead of grieve the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah.